This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 290, baby. Oh yeah, we are getting really close to that episode 300 mark, aren't we? So anyway, in today's episode, I speak to Corporal Coma. Yes, he is back. If you have just started listening to the podcast in the last probably 12 months, you probably don't know who Corporal Coma is, but he is a big deal on this podcast. He has done many podcasts in the past. Another close friend that I went to school with, primary school, in fact, and we actually mentioned that on the pod. So here is the conversation with Corporal Coma. He may be difficult to understand. So remember, if you are in the membership area, the R&R family, remember you have the transcript. It's just in the description to this podcast. And if you are in the family, wait till tomorrow where we do the family podcast with Corporal Coma and have a real good chit chat. And remember, if you want to become part of the membership area, the Rock and Roll English family, where there are more than 1,000 extra episodes, just go to rockandrollenglish.com, click become a member. Anyway, that is definitely enough of me talking. So here is the episode with me and Corporal Coma, where we talk about getting seriously drunk, hooks on glasses, the day we first met at school and lots more. Happy listening. Corporal Coma, how are you today? I'm doing really well, Martin. It's good to be back. How are you? Always fantastic. It's good to have you back. Long time no speak. I know. On the podcast, not in real life. I think I saw you about 10 days ago. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know how long has it been since I've been on. Um, I think about a year, but you are back by popular demand. I thought the people didn't love you, Corporal Coma, but I was wrong. I was wrong. The people do love you, Um, which was shown at the meetup. You were quite a hit there. Oh, my God, it's Corporal Coma. Look at him. (laughs) And people even asked for you back. So here you are. I give the people what they want, Coma. Okay. Wow. I mean, that makes me feel very, very happy that I'm so loved. Yeah, exactly. Almost hurts me a bit because I don't like anything going well for you. <laughs> Although, jokes aside, you are now a father as well, though, aren't you, Corporal Coma? You have joined the the dad club. I have indeed, yeah. Just nearly three months, yeah. Exactly. So so that's what you've been doing on on your time out. Okay? Yeah, I have been quite busy, yeah. <laughs> you, you had a one-year maternity leave. No, pater- pater- paternity leave, of yeah, course. Yeah. That's the one, yeah. Um, anyway, so it's been a long time. Do you remember how we start the podcast of course with a review oh yes do you think we have a review i'm back i'm feeling positive i'm gonna say yes i I like it coma i like your vibe okay and we do it's a five star itunes review always the best five stars it says a powerful podcast as simple as it is by jess aj and it says boom shakalaka after Three months ish, I have finally finished listening to all the episodes of Rock and Roll English. So now it is my duty to say that it's been such a lovely, wild journey. It takes you to old school days, to a beach in Italy, hiking in Switzerland, to every pub in England, of course. Almost felt drunk by listening to many stories where Martin and his friends were actually drunk to Uganda and its wildlife and crazy immigrants, to football matches in big stadiums full of passionate hearts and voices singing together. I could keep going, but it is honestly extremely worthy to be part of this, not only because of the English learning part, which is the purpose of the podcast, but also because every episode is a celebration of life. And that is priceless. In a few words, great show. Don't miss it. Wow, what a review. Hey, Corporal Coma. Very articulate. Quite the wordsmith. Yeah, indeed. And the the one about actually listening when we were drunk, I think that was your wedding, actually. (laughs) 
I hope he, I can't imagine you being drunk on any other pods. Mm, yeah, I when I listened to that back, that was a real low moment <laughs> in my life actually, because I always thought when I'm drunk, you know, I probably don't sound that bad. I can hold it together, but after listening to that podcast, it was like, wow, no, I can't. I think that was probably next level drunk as well, though, wasn't it? It wasn't like you just had three pints. Yeah, that was that was seriously drunk, <laughs> seriously. So just for anyone, it's not a good idea to record yourself speaking when you are seriously drunk. So um, on to today's show, Corporal Coma. Now, these days I'm struggling for topics, so I have to think of some something happens in my life and I think that will be a good topic. So I recently, I think the last time I saw you, had a bit of a red eye. You did, yeah, yeah. So I um, I had to go to the opticians and I thought, let's have a chat about eyes because you know stuff about eyes and glasses, don't you, Corporal Coma? <laughs> oh, I can already tell where this is going to go. Yeah, But uh, I mean, I, no, I wouldn't say I know, I know an awful lot, but I, I do wear glasses and contact lenses, yeah. And you have done since we met when we were five years old. In yeah. fact, I think I remember looking at you. For some reason, my memory seems to be you had really thick glasses, like, you know, like the real nerd kid at school with like glasses that are like five centimetres wide. It That was seemed like you. And I remember thinking, I'm going to be mates with him 30 years later. <laughs> well, because I joined that school after a year, didn't I? So yeah. I didn't do the first year of that school. I went to a different school. Then I came to that school and I had to kind of pick my friends and I kind of looked at you and thought, yeah, I think I'll, I'll probably just won't talk to him for a little bit. <laughs> Looks were deceiving though. I think I was already so bloody popular. You just thought, well, he might look like a nerd, but I mean, he's the coolest kid in the class. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, w- w- mm, that's not the impression I had at first, but you don't seem to wear glasses so much these days. But like I said, back then, and in fact, I had this on later, but let's jump straight into it. Am I also right in thinking when we played football you had the glasses with that kind of strap on round your head so that they didn't fall off while playing football <laughs> so there is an element of truth in this again you've you've kind of <laughs> bastardized it so it's not correct but essentially they were glasses that had little hooks that went behind my ears oh the hooks yeah so i could head <laughs> the ball which i was too scared to do anyway so it's pointless um, but essentially they wouldn't fall off I thought it was a strap going round the back of no. the head, but I didn't realise you went for the really cool, sexy hooks around the ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is unfortunately true, yeah. Yeah, it's strange that your football career never really took off while <laughs> playing with um, glasses with hooks around your ears. It's not that it? strange. I'm also rubbish at football, so... <laughs> So, yeah, I thought we could talk about this glasses, opticians and all that. So when I did go the other day, my red eye apparently was from not sleeping very much, which is because I've got a small child at home. So I think the best thing to do there is have another child. So (laughs) double down on it. (laughs) So that is really going to improve. And he said to me, when was your last sight test? And I said, uh, it was November 2007. Wow. And he said, wow, like one, that was a long time ago. And two, you remember <laughs> really well. And I said, yeah, that was because I remember it was my birthday. I was out with some friends from university and we got seriously drunk again. And it turned into a bit of a food fight in the pub and someone threw a chip and it hit me straight in the eye. My eye didn't stop watering for about a week. You, it's one of those things you kind of leave it the first few days thinking it will be OK, but then kind of thinking, I think I need to. There might, yeah, there might be something wrong. Here. <laughs> um, so, I, so that's the last time I went. But how often do you go to get new hooks on your glasses <laughs> so you, they don't fall off your head? Well, I was, to be fair, nearly, and bearing in mind my eyesight is actually quite bad i was nearly as bad as you i was probably going every six seven years and just wearing the same pair of glasses um and i hadn't been for a very long time and then went last christmas no last christmas was when i first got contact lenses and the last time i went before that was about seven years before that you should go every six months (laughs) 
Right, but you were going for the every seven years, right? Yeah, well, like okay. you said, because I don't wear them very much and I didn't feel like they were getting much worse. That, that's why, though, probably I do... If I, if someone said to me, what is Corporal Coma's favourite gesture? I would go for the squint. Now, a squint, <laughs> just think of like you can't see something and you're kind of like making that strange facial movement to try and see. I've seen you do that many a time. Oh. And that kind of does make sense now if you only change your glasses once every seven and, years. And don't wear them. So when you're out, you're not wearing them. And like I said, my eyesight is genuinely quite bad. So yeah, I can't see. People have waved to me on the other side of the road and I, I don't know if they're waving at me or someone else. I don't know who it is. Um, I could see your eyes were bad from the day I met you because I saw how thick your glasses were. But um, <laughs> So yeah, I could see it was something serious back then. But some other things. So... I found an article on BuzzFeed about people that wear glasses. So obviously real highbrow stuff, really intellectual stuff there on BuzzFeed. And it said wearing them while sweating is the worst. So, for example, if you go to the gym and you start sweating now, is that the same for you, Coma? Or I, I can never really see you getting into a sweat, though. That's the thing, doing enough physical exercise to actually start sweating. Well, yeah, it's twofold. I... <laughs> I'm never doing enough exercise to actually start sweating. And so I wouldn't be wearing glasses at the gym. Like my eyesight isn't that bad that I need glasses at the gym. Uh, so I think it was this time last year, we were going to the gym together, weren't we? Corporal Coma pumping iron. We were, yeah. That's all All stopped about six months ago. Yeah, that, that's that's called a falling off a cliff. Yeah. A bit. When was the last time you went to the gym, Corporal Coma? I would, I would say about six months ago. <laughs> still paying though still paying every month oh yeah i worked out the other day i think i've spent about a hundred and about 180 pounds for not even stepping through the door <laughs> money well spent so i actually unfortunately had to cancel but i still was going like once every two weeks i suppose something like that but i, I still had to cancel but when we were at the gym yeah you didn't have glasses but that first day at the gym, I think, was it the first time you had ever been in a gym, Corporal Coma? Yeah, when we started going last year, it was the first time I'd ever been in a gym, yeah. I, I just have this memory of coming downstairs and the only time I, I, I think in our more than 30 years of friendship, you actually did sort of look to me like help me <laughs> you, well you vaguely knew what you were doing yeah <laughs> you were kind of looking at me to say like what are we doing and I was thinking you know I'd like let's say 10 0 to 10 10 is a gym instructor's knowledge i would say i'm about three <laughs> maybe a two so it, it was yeah i think the expression the blind leading the blind yeah. yeah um so yeah we weren't looking particularly cool although you did go i remember with a baseball cap on didn't you yeah um, i did yeah which i did find strange i specifically remember you lifting the weight above your head and knocking the hat off your head at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you only do that once. Uh, so, yeah, another another really strong look, I think, there. So what else do I have here? So it says when you go out for a run, then obviously they, they fog up, but you've just mentioned you don't, you don't wear them. You did tell me during lockdown you went for a few runs. If there's one person I could never imagine going for a run it's it's you but but you did you went for a few runs did you i did yeah it was very very few and far between um <laughs> but again i wouldn't wear my glasses I, I don't need glasses to to run well if you can't see someone on the other side of the road i would say you're you're hazard you're going to cause a traffic accident you're going to start running into the middle of the road things are just a bit blurry i can still i can still see what's what everything is <laughs> If you see Corporal Coma running towards you, just get out of the way fast. <laughs> yeah, I would do that. Uh, and I, another one here. So it says, when you fall asleep with them on, it's beyond <laughs> annoying. So how many times have you fallen asleep with them on? Very rarely. I mean, the, it's almost it's ingrained into your second nature. If you're falling asleep, you take your glasses off. Mm. Now, I think we have spoken on the podcast before about the time uh, you fell asleep <laughs> with them on and I, I vomited on your face. But we were like for any new listeners that didn't hear that story. It was a long time ago. We were about eight years old at the time. Obviously, I was seriously drunk again. 
<laughs> I, I think I'd eaten too many crisps, what, which was the problem. And then you, you woke up and took those glasses off and just had those two little two little holes <laughs> of no vomit on your face. And, and I still say, Coma, you told me you wanted to see your dreams more clearly. And that's why you were wearing them. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have been wearing my glasses, but I, I can't be bothered to argue about this story any longer. <laughs> Right. So another thing it says here is frequent checkups are annoying, but I think you have <laughs> you've already spoken about that in that you said that you only go every seven years. So I don't think it's that annoying if you go every seven years, is it? Well, no, that's exactly it. They are a bit annoying. Uh, they're expensive as well. The eye checkups. Yeah. I yeah. They're, I think about well, 40 pounds now. I went the other day, paid 30. So I had to go for my red eye. And then I said, look, I haven't been in a long time. Can I have a checkup? And they said, no, that, that's a separate thing. So I had to go back another day, went back, £30. And then they said, you're fine. See you later. And I said, cool. that's why I never come. That's why I haven't been for 15 years. Um, and then they make you obviously read those lines, don't they? And, mm. and I take great pride in that. I could I could feel myself struggling a bit to read that bottom line, but I was like, I'm going to bloody read this. If there's one, th- this, the only good thing about my body is my eyesight. <laughs> yeah, mine's mine's. I certainly can't read anywhere near the bottom. Yeah, the the rest is just completely falling apart. I've got another toothache. Oh no! But I'm I'm at that stage again now where you kind of think I'll I'll let it. I'll leave it for a while. I just let it hurt and hurt and hurt until it gets to the point where it's unbearable. <laughs> And that's when you go to the dentist. I mean, that is expensive to fix. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, I also had to go again to the dentist recently. Had something called a root canal, whatever that is. And they said, yeah, that will be like two, three hundred pound. And then I went back a week later, had it go down to pay. How much is that? Four (laughs) hundred and eighty. Okay, good. (laughs) So that's more or less double what? I was expecting two, three hundred. I kind of went for two fifty, four hundred and eighty. Yes, brilliant. Thank you. So frustrating. So frustrating indeed. And it says here, getting your lenses smudged. So smudged. So when someone touches them, is really annoying. I can see your head moving up and down. Obviously, um, this is a podcast, so other people can't see that but so that's that's annoying is it corporal coma it's incredibly annoying it's it's incredibly annoying if you've just cleaned your glasses so you've got your little spray out your little cloths (laughs) you spend like five minutes getting them you know like crystal clear and particularly at the moment now baby corporal coma will just jam her greasy little hand in my in my face and it's like oh god's sake i just love the idea you said you have your little like your little tools, like your little cloth yeah. to clean it and your your little spray. So you just go around with that. Well, I don't go around with that. It's just in my house. <laughs> See, I thought you had like an emergency thing, like hidden inside your underpants or something. <laughs> you know, you never know. No. You just pull out this little cloth to wipe your glasses. Um, but yeah, no, Mrs. R and R wears glasses and she says the same. And one thing which happens quite frequently is... She's wearing them, we're out, and, you know, I'm a romantic guy, Coma, so I maybe give her a little kiss, just a quick kiss, and obviously my nose being on the large side <laughs> then smudges her glasses. So it's it's not a great feeling when I, you know, try to give her a kiss and the reaction is, oh, for God's sake, now I have to clean my glasses. <laughs> Does she get her little kit out with her spray in? She, yep, she hides it in her underpants as well, of course. <laughs> We all do. Uh, exactly. I think everyone does, don't they? Um, and it says here about having to buy sunglasses, special sunglasses. Do you do this? Uh, I do, yes. I, I actually bought, I, I treated myself a couple of years ago to some, some Ray-Ban prescription sunglasses. So Ooh, obviously Ray-Ban wow. sunglasses are, are pretty expensive. But I, Ray-Ban plus prescription Ray-Ban sunglasses. Ray-Ban plus prescription. Is that- this, is, this has cost a pretty penny. But because they put the prescription into the sunglasses, they can't do it on the actual Ray-Ban lenses. So they don't say Ray-Ban on them. So they just... <laughs> the... Exactly. So I've just spent like £400 on some glasses that quite literally could look like they cost £4 for market. <laughs> and it's funny you say that because I... About sunglasses, 
have a rule that I will never spend more than five euros, which is about four pound of what what you said. And the reason is because one, I don't like wearing them. I don't like having something on my face. And two, I always, always lose them. Yeah. So I've never spent more than five euros. And when I obviously was in Sicily where you, you kind of need them more than you do in the UK. And I would buy them from, you know, the people selling stuff on the beach. Yeah. And every time you're haggling with the price, like he starts with like a hundred euros. He says, these like 500, these are real Ray-Bans. They've got a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> I say, no, no. I say, look, five is my limit. I'm, I've never gone more than five. That's so, and I always get the deal done. <laughs> always get the deal done for five, and that it makes me so happy. Um, so the last one to talk about here is, well, you tell me if you go to three D movies, Corporal Coma, <laughs> is is this a bit of a problem for you? Well, it it is. Well, it used to be. It wouldn't be now because I just wear contact lenses. But yeah, you'd essentially have to wear glasses over glasses. <laughs> All of the things you've spoken about here, are just so sexy, the hooks around your ear, <laughs> your little kit down your pants, and then wearing glasses over glasses. Um, but what you mentioned there about contact lenses, I honestly don't know how you, you do that because I was given for my red eye just some drops to put in my eyes because he said my eyes are too dry. So simple drops to put in to make them like more moist, let's say. Yeah. And... Honestly, if you came to my house to see Mrs. R and R putting these in my eye because I, I'm too scared to do it, you would think I'm having a life threatening operation. <laughs> Thrashing about. <laughs> I'm like on the floor, like screaming. Like a fish it's... out of water. <laughs> yeah, so the idea of actually putting a contact lens on my eye, absolutely not. So, well, thanks, Corporal Coma, for sharing all of your glasses knowledge for us and all of your really sexy tips for us I, i've certainly learned a lot and i'm sure everyone else has too well thanks for having me back it's uh it's been great to be back it's been great to have you and hopefully we'll see you soon bye 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 okay so that was me speaking to corporal coma about glasses and eyes and all the rest of it so let's have a look at some of that r and r vocab at the beginning i said to corporal coma back by popular demand that means people were asking for him to come back i also mentioned he was a hit at the meetup when we actually met up in person with the r and r english family he was a hit so let's say he was popular Corporal Coma also described the wonderful review we received from r r family member Jessica as quite the wordsmith. So a wordsmith is someone that is really good with words and she is really good with words. In fact, I think I'm going to put that review on my wall because I love that. It's a celebration of life. That's a great way to describe rock and roll English. So thank you again. Jessica. So what else do we have here? I said that I thought I could hold it together when drunk. So to hold it together, to not embarrass yourself, to be normal, let's say. Corporal Coma mentioned how looks are deceiving. So don't be fooled by what you see, because even though he had the most ridiculous glasses, apparently he was the coolest kid in school. He mentioned how I've decided to double down on no sleep. So when you double down on no sleep, sorry, when you double down on anything, you strengthen your commitment to it, let's say. So that's why Mrs. R and R and I are having another child. We use the verb squint. You do this when you can't see something. It's in the distance and you kind of close your eyes. You're trying to see it. You have to squint. And I mentioned how I've seen corporal coma do that many a time. Notice that many a time to say many times, but much more R and R. I mentioned how what I read my five minutes research for this podcast, something on BuzzFeed, and I described it as really highbrow. So something that is highbrow is let's say intellectual reading stuff. We mentioned how our pumping iron sessions at the gym have fallen off a cliff. So doesn't happen anymore. We spoke about glasses fogging up. Notice the phrasal verb. They fog up. 
Corporal Coma also mentioned how his runs are very few and far between. So basically to say he doesn't go running very much. I described him as a hazard, so something or someone that is dangerous. And he mentioned how when you have glasses, you don't really fall asleep with them on because it's ingrained into you. It's just part of you. It's second nature. You just know you need to take them off before you go to sleep. We spoke about lenses of glasses getting smudged. Now, if someone smudges them, it's basically when they touch them and you can't see them anymore. Corporal Coma also said that he spent a pretty penny on his Ray-Ban sunglasses. So a pretty penny, lots of money, let's say. And I mentioned how I haggle with the people that sell the sunglasses on the beach. So they want 500 I give them five. So that is all of the vocab for today. Remember to go to rockandrollenglish.com and then click podcast episodes and find this episode that has the show notes and some R&R grammar for you. So thanks everyone for listening. I will see you all again very soon. I may even be a father for the second time when I see you again. But thanks a lot for listening. See you soon. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.